Uh, today I want to talk about drawing tools. Uh, drawing tools is uh, one of the biggest things you'll have to do in your creation is using the drawing tools that we have within the software, whether you're drawing a graphic or whether you're drawing with rhinestones, um, directly with rhinestones, okay? Um, as always, questions are always welcome, and uh, hopefully you all can hear me. All right, good. Meyer, good to see you. All right, so whenever you have a question, just uh, again, post your question in there. We'll definitely answer them as we get them. Uh, so in today's world, the graphics that you're going to get from clients may or, or may not be what we call camera ready. Camera ready graphics are actually graphics that are very clean, very maybe a vector, they may be an encapsulated postscript vector or, or a Windows Metafile, Enhanced Metafile SVG graphics. You'll get a bunch of different type of formats of graphics or you may get like uh, I've gotten in the past uh, a sketch on a napkin and you know how do you deal with that sketch in this software, okay? We're going to talk about all these things today, different types of art you're going to get and how to use your drawing tools to create your designs that you need. Now this is uh, being recorded as we speak and um, so uh, this will be available up on our website uh, shortly after um, uh, we, we finish this. So getting started, okay, now images that come in, uh, most of your, most of your, your clients are going to come in, are going to come in with some kind of maybe a business card they'll have uh, that they'll send to you um, and then they want that logo that's on their business card blown up and put on the back of a shirt or, or on a left chest. Uh, when dealing with rhinestones, um, you need to be cognizant of the detail that you're trying to capture. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the uh, internet and we're going to find some bad art. Okay, purposely uh, deal with some bad art so we can learn how to do our drawing tools. All right, so Google, and we are going to go to Google. Okay, and uh, we'll do some, uh, let's see, we're going to go to um, uh, logos, clip art. Okay. Okay, so we're going to purposely find some bad images, like this image right here. Uh, maybe, maybe something that will be on somebody's business card. Um, or this one here. Let's do this one here, okay? This A. I'm going to bring this up. Okay. Let's go back into software. And we'll bring that image in. desktop. Let's see, there it is right there. So I'm going to drag it in. Now looking at this image, okay, this is a, this is a comparable image that you'll get from, uh, from a client, okay? You can see how grainy the image is. It's very low resolution. It's not very good, uh, but they want all the detail, okay? The, they require all the detail. Let's say the, they'll give me this image and they'll say, well, I want this to be five inches wide by uh, proportional height. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll size this out right away. Everybody understands that when the bounding box, the, the, the box that's encircling this image is not touching the leading edges. You can't size using the uh, sizing tool here. You must, set to, you must use set size to do it. And the way you use set size, you draw a line in the direction that you're measuring, okay, or need to set the size to. The customer wants this five and a half inches wide, so I measure width. Whatever I just measured comes up here, and I'll type in five and a half, okay? Now the image is five and a half inches. See, if you use the sizing, um, if you use the sizing in the layout right here, it's not going to be five and a half inches. The bounding box will be five and a half inches. Your image will be smaller, okay? Now, what I need to do is I have to look at this image and pick out the, the hardest thing that's going to be for me to create. And the hardest thing that's going to be for me to create is the actual, the writing here, the 1950 Anzac and 2015, okay? And in order to figure out what size I can do this, is, do this in, 
what I'm first going to do is I'm actually going to grab a rhinestone and see at what size this image needs to be for, for me to create a nine that's going to be legible. Okay? So what I'll do is I'll go to my, my catalog and I'm going to add the stones that I'm probably going to need. Okay, looking at my image, of course I'm going to need a, a clear SS6. Okay. Clear, sorry. There we go. We're going to need a red. Uh, we're going to need black too. So let me go ahead and do a black. And we're going to need uh, a gray, apparently. It's got a lot of colors in it. Now, chances are I would not do the gray here, okay? The gray is pretty much a shadow effect, shows an angle to the, to the, uh, the fan, the, the, uh, I guess this is a fan kind of thing. Uh, so it's like a beveled look. So, I mean, you can do gray, but it's going to take you a lot longer to create the design. But um, I would probably uh, just do like a black diamond if I was going to do the gray. Okay, so we'll, we'll go ahead and add it because we may need it. And then we're going to add the red as well. We need an SS6 red. And then we'll add an SS10 red. We'll also add an SS10 clear for the big A in the middle. Okay, here's my stones, okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see what, how big this image has gotta be in order for me to create this one. I'm just gonna create it the way I have it now and I'm gonna see if it's legible. And you can see right now that looks okay as a one. Well, no, it doesn't. When you look at that, it doesn't look okay as a one. I need this to have four lines of stones, four stones lengthwise, in order for it to look like a one, okay? That looks like a one, so the four stone height. So the customer's request of this being five and a half inches is not gonna work for me, okay? Um, so what I'll do is I will click on my image and I'll resize until that one is four stone height, okay? So I just need to go a little bit more out a little bit. And I always resize proportionally. I'm holding my shift key in to resize out and, and height and width. And now when I lay this over top of it, now the one pretty much looks close enough where I can get the rest of the detail, okay? And that makes the image now, uh, when I go to set size here, makes it about seven and a three quarter inches. So that's the minimum uh, that I can create this design, okay? Uh, based upon what the customer wants. So that's when you want to contact your customer and tell them, well, the five and a half won't work because I can't get the detail. Uh, so now I now at seven and three quarters, I can call the customer and have give them the option to change different aspects around, okay? Now, the only time I would recreate this as a graphic, as a vector, would be if I intend to use my cutter Okay, if, if, you're, if you're coming from a cutter background, well then I can't really use this graphic as it is to, uh, uh, for my cutter, okay? I'm not gonna get the detail. I'm not gonna be able to convert anything because when you go to Hotfix and I choose my fill and I'll choose my autocomplete, which gives me a magic wand, when I click on that A, nothing's being selected, okay? And that's because it's a very low resolution image. So chances are what I would have to do, since my, vec since my cutter needs a, a vector, is I would use artwork and I would use Bezier, choose a color, I'll choose a type of fill, I'm, I'm going to do a fill for this A, and what I would do is just uh, draw this A out. So I'll just come up here, just like this. And let me, if you make a mistake, just hit your backspace button and re-click. 
and I will redraw this A, and when I'm done drawing it, it will be a vector, okay? There's the vector, okay? So now what I'll do is I'll hide the vector, and now I'm going to create this middle part here, okay? I'm going to choose red this time. I'm going to go to Bezier, and I'm going to do this part right here. Okay, now when I turn the vector on, okay, what I'm going to do is select both vectors and I'm going to simplify this and I'm going to get rid of the red because I just needed to cut a hole in, in the A, okay? And now I can go ahead and, and create the rest of it. So now I can go to be, uh, back to Bezier and I will choose white or gray and I will start to draw this out. Okay, we're done with that. So, and I always turn vectors off. I'll see them when I create them, but they immediately go away so I can see the rest of my graphic uh, that I need. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and do the, now we'll do the second part. So let me just go here, zoom in, and we'll go back to uh, Bezier. And we'll do this one. It would be so nice if these were the same size. I can copy and paste and angle, but uh, these, all these uh, veins are different. So let me just open up my, uh, I'm gonna set a shortcut because I, I hate zooming in and zooming out. Um, it really slows down my production speed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a shortcut for the hand tool. The hand tool is called your panning. Panning is actually moving around in the workspace, okay? And I'm gonna set F1 to it because it's right up in the upper left corner. Oop, I forgot to say okay, hold on. Options, customize. Find pan, should be right down here. It's down pretty far, so, so we're gonna set F1 to it. I'm gonna hit the check mark. You can see F1 is now selected. All right, so now you can see when I, I can now hit the F1 button and it turns into a hand and I can move to the next location and then start drawing again. By turning the vector off, you can see the vector I just created goes away and I'm creating the new one. It's not going to clutter up my screen. I can see all the other parts about my design that I need to be cognizant of. There it is, see it shows up as soon as you finish the shape. And then go, go back to Bezier, reposition. And you can see what we're doing is we're recreating this image, okay? Now this does take time, okay? This, uh, this does take time and you need to charge. Most, most uh, graphic artists will charge anywhere from 25 to $30 an hour to redo this and you want to definitely make sure you're not wrapping it into the price. I mean, you can wrap it into the price of the, of the, uh, of the design. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but you definitely want to make sure that your labor is accounted for. Uh, this, this can take a long time, especially with this, because not only do I got to do all these, all these pieces here. Okay. But I also got to do all the, uh, all the other stuff too. This is, I'm going to make gray so you can see it. There we go. I got to do all the other stuff. I got to do the banner, and I got to do the all the you know all the stuff inside the red. Okay, I got to do all that. Okay, when I get to a certain point, what I'll do is I'll highlight, Control C, Control V, bring it over here. We'll mirror this, and oh, wrong way. And then we'll go. And see if we can just put this right, see if it lines up. Usually it will. Almost does. It almost does. Now, if I hold my control button, I could probably rotate this just a little bit. And get it to work. I think that that, that, that that sort of works right there. Okay. 
and uh, then we would, we would just have those other three. That's using your drawing tools, okay, to recreate a graphic. Once I do that, I no longer need my image, and I can convert these to rhinestones. Okay, and of course with the right spacing, 17, that's comparable for cutting, okay? See, when we were selecting the image, we weren't seeing anything, okay? Now, for those of us that are actually using uh, uh, automatic rhinestone machines, okay? Let's get, get rid of the vector. We, we don't really need to create or even try to vectorize. I don't think this image will vectorize very well, only because of the many, many colors that are in it. Uh, matter, if we, uh, re let's try to reduce colors first, okay? If I go to color reduction, we have basically black, gray, clear, red, five. We got five colors in it. So if we reduce this to five colors, we're not getting a very good image here. You see how th this is not right here, okay? And if you try to vectorize this, let's try to convert this to vector, okay? Let's tell it to look for up to 16 colors. Right, look at all those colors of gray I got. Transparency, none. If I vectorize this, you know, look at our image. Look how distorted it is. So you can't even vectorize this, okay? This becomes a nightmare, okay? So what you need to do is you don't create a vector, okay? All you got to do is basically draw with rhinestones, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and show you how simple this is, okay? Using the graphic that we have, okay, the first thing you got to do is determine what colors you're going to do first, okay? Black, the darkest color of this image is black. It's, it's going to be last, okay? The black has got to be on top of the red. It's got to be on top of the white and gray. And it's got to be on top of uh, uh, the uh, white of the, of the A. So what I'll do is I'll cr I'm going to create gray first, followed by white, and then I'll do the and then I'll do the red, because the red here is behind the A. Then I'll create the A. So you got to think in layers, okay? When you're when you're creating a design, always do the background layers first and layer as you go up, okay? All right. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to go to Hotfix. I'm going to choose the first stone I want to work with first, which is going to be the gray. I'm going to choose my tool, which is going to be Uniform Fill. I'm going to set my bead spacing, okay, and now I'm just going to go ahead and create, okay. Now we have straight lines here, okay, you can see the edges of this gray area are straight, so you don't want to be on curve here, okay. If I curve, you know, it's it, and I, I come up here to this corner and I cut across, see it's curving on me, okay. I want to draw in straight lines, so I'll, I'll go ahead and choose the straight line node, and I'm just going to draw this out, just boom. I'm just going to stay inside the white area just a little bit so I have room for the black, for the black outside, okay? Enter, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust some things here, okay? First of all, I'm going to adjust my bead space into four. And I'm also going to adjust my margin. I want the margin to come in a little bit. Where you're drawing your vector line is going to be the center of the stone. So even though I was in a little bit off the white, I'm still I have still no no room for black. Okay, and matter of fact, I'm going to redraw that. I did that totally wrong. So we're going to start here, and I'm going to just come in just a little bit more. I'm actually going to stay on the edge. Just stay on. This will actually be easier. Stay right on the edge, and then come straight up here. Enter, and then find your numbers, okay? Four is going to be the beat spacing. The margin is going to kick this in on itself. So I'm going to start with a 12, and that looks pretty good. See all the gray is right on the edge there? Okay, don't worry about the points. You're not going to get a stone up there, okay? All right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to go to, now we're going to uh, deselect. And now we'll go to hotfix again. And we'll choose this one here. We're going to choose our clear stone. Set the bead spacing of four. And we're going to do 12 on the margin. And we're going to stay right on the edge, just like we did with the gray, okay? Just come straight in here. See, what I did is I, I saved myself some time 
by finding out what the margin and beat spacing is going to be. And now I could just keep drawing, okay? Now I can just go ahead and do the next clear, okay? I know these numbers are going to work, okay? Because they worked on the first one. If, if, you don't, if you don't do your margin off on the first drawing, then you'll have to go back and do it, okay? And don't worry about how that looks, okay? Remember, you're dealing with rhinestones. It's not, you're not looking for detail. You're compromising detail for, for, for flash and, and, and bling. So you just want to... Just want to make sure that you're doing everything you can. Now, see, some of these, what you'll need to change, like this one here, probably look better with a hexagon fill. But the hexagon fill negates your border, your your margin. So, I'm just going to I'm just going to keep it there, and I may just decrease my margin just a little bit to get a, be, a little bit better fill. Something like that. Okay. So now we'll deselect. We'll go back to the hot fix fill. And we're still at 4 and 12. See, we're, our numbers still stay the same because we set it on the first thing we drew. Stay right on the edge. And just keep going around. This is drawing your rhinestones out, okay? I didn't have to convert anything to vector. Couldn't do it anyway. Ah, I did it wrong. There we go. Enter. And what I did is I just hit the backspace button a couple, a couple clicks. And I just go straight to where, right where I need to go. Uh, see, what I did is I should have uh, brought that over just a little bit more. So backspace, re-click re on it. here. Now, I always look for shortcuts, and when I did the graphic, when I drew the graphic out for this, it really didn't match up to the, to the right side very well. And that could be just from image distortion, that could be for a myriad of different reasons, uh, or just the graphic intent of the artist who created this, okay? Uh, but it, knowing that it didn't really fit very well, that's why I'm doing it. Just that's why I'm I'm taking my time, and I'm going to draw every single one of these out. I'll be happy with the result. Take your time in in creating designs that'll distinguish you from the people that are actually just doing it uh, as quickly as they can. Not really not really caring about the detail or consistency of uh, what the design looks like. So I'm I will take the time to create this. One at a time. After all, I do charge twenty-five dollars per um, uh, per hour to do this. By the way, the charges that you want to do is twenty-five dollars per hour for the first hour, because there's going to be some artwork that you could just magic wand and then create. So you you still charge twenty-five dollars up to the first hour and twenty-five dollars every hour after that, and it's a one-time charge. It's a setup charge. Uh, needs to be charged. You could find yourself in the red, especially when you could be running the rhinestone machine instead of creating designs. All right, let's take a look at that now. Okay, you can see it look, it's looking pretty good. I've got this one over here I'm going to have to delete later on. I'm not worried about this because when we, when we do all the rest of the detail, when we go to gray here and we do this, it'll fill it in. We still got a, a black outline to do to this. Okay, and then we just, we do this now, okay? Stay right on the edge with it. Remember, you have your margin, you have your margin setting in there, and it's going to appropriate itself to all the other ones. Now, on some of these, you may want to just go ahead and, uh, you know, adjust your bead spacing a little bit. You see, I'm on 10 on this one here. So I'm going to set it to 4. That's where it should be. I think this one was set to 10, so I'm going to set this one to 4. 
Matter of fact, I'm going to turn my image off. I'm going to make sure these are all at four. And I do that. To do it universally to all the parts of the design, you're going to do that from Object Manager. And there's the properties. B type is an SS6. Oh, I guess I don't want to choose the ones because they were manually made. There we go. So we got four points on the bead spacing. There we go. All right, good. So now we're now we should be tight and consistent on everything. So we're going to go right back into our fill. We're going to set our bead spacing to four, and we're going to keep going. So here. So using the hand tool is going to help you speed up your production because you're not reliant on zooming in and zooming out to go to a different section. All I'm doing is hitting the F1 button because I set the F1 button as my, uh, as my hotkey to bring up the hand tool. So I'm constantly hitting the F1 on and off to move my image. Now, it only takes you about two weeks of drawing out images like this that are poor before you get very fast with creating designs like this. And you can find yourself only taking maybe an hour, maybe just like for this design, probably take me about an hour and a half to completely uh, get this design done. And it's a one-time charge. Like I said, the customers will not argue the fact that they, it kind of, you know, keeps them in my in my wheelhouse because they, they've already paid me to have the art done. So they don't have to go to a different customer, a uh, different place and have to repay for that art that's going. Now, I'll edit it on the fly here, okay? I'll move some things around, especially when they don't line up good, tighter areas, okay? Let's take a look at our image, okay? You can see what we're doing here, see? With a black background to it. You can see we're, we're, we're getting the detail that we want, that we, we're capable of getting, okay? All right, so we change the background color back, back to white. And then we'll just go ahead and we'll start to do the black now, okay? So the black, I'm gonna use, uh, probably use like a, an SS10 on, on this. So, because, and I'll show you why. So I'm gonna go to SS10 and add a black stone. By the way, I never buy glass rhinestones that are black, okay? I use rhine studs, okay? It's opaque. I'm going to take a look and see if this, see, this is going to work fine. And also, it's going to work fine down here. This line that I do here will be for both this uh, vein and this vein here. So I think we'll be fine with this. So for this, I will do path, okay? I'll come up here, come up here, I'm down right in the middle here, and it's going to serve as the line for both veins. Now, I will do SS6 around the, the red here, okay? So I'm going to be far enough away from it so I can still put an SS6 stone there. Now, remember, where your cursor is, that's the center of the stone. So if I come right down here, okay, I'm going to be overlapping that stone, and I'll have to move it later on. So I'm just going to be far enough away from that last stone on the side. And also from the, the, the circle that's on the black here. You can see by just using some simple drawing tools, you can actually get this job done pretty quick. Hmm. See, I made a mistake there. I want to be far enough away from this stone here so I, I could save myself. Um, some work later of editing my design because my stones are too close or they're overlapping. 
and with a design this small and this much detail, if you're overlapping in stones, when you do your solve overlaps, you're going to have a lot of missing stones. Now don't worry about the fact that this is a little bit uh, wider of a band here. Uh, you know, it's it's fine. It's it's gonna it's gonna feel nice. It's gonna look consistent. I won't go down here with an SS6 stone. Okay, you're just gonna create flips of stones on your transfer sheet that you have to fix because in order to get SS6 stones in there to try to replicate the artwork, it's actually gonna cause stone collision because glass stones are not consistent from one stone to another. They're actually different sizes, different from one stone to another. And that's because they're made of glass, okay? So I'm just going to, I'm not even going to worry about filling in all the black so all the black is filled in. Remember, you're trying to get a simulation in rhinestones of what the actual graphic looks like. All right, we'll do this one here. come down here and I'm going to stop right here only because now we have curved elements around the banner here. Let's take a look and see what we created so far. And you can see by in no time you can actually create this design. Okay. Now in using the red, all right, after I would finish, I would have done all the gray and the black would have been the last thing I did on top just for time purposes. I want to actually uh, continue on here. So now the next part I would do is going to be the red. So I would choose um, I would probably use, let me, let's try an SS6, okay, and see what the SS6 looks like. And I'm going to go to Hotfix, and we're going to use a uniform fill. And I'm going to keep 12 as my border, as my margin, okay? Um, and that allows me to go right on the edge of the red and still have it kick in. But this time I want to use Curve, okay? So let's get and start from here. Now, when I get to the, the portion of the A right here, I'm going to hold my control button and put a corner node in it. Because if I don't, see how it flares out on you? Because we need to cut this corner to come down and finish this section of the circle. So you want to hold your control button down and then click. And that puts a blue node in there, which is a corner node. It allows me to cut the corner. And I'll put a corner node here. If I don't, it's going to flare out on me. So I'm going to hold my my uh, control button and then click and then finish up with a corner node. And we'll do the same thing over here. We're going to stay right on the edge. Corner node first because we're, we're starting at a corner. We'll come down here right on the edge. Corner node, corner node. Release the control button. Go back to curve. And I end on a corner node. This one here will be just a couple, and I'm going to probably put those stones in one at a time. All right, so uh, on this part of the A, I need some room for the black, so I'm just going to stay right on the edge of the red. Corner node, corner node, release it. Do the curve. Corner node here, come up. Keep area, only stay on the red. Don't go up to the A, okay? Just, you're just outlining the red. And then we end on a corner node. Let's take a look at that. Looks pretty good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to change my tool to a hot fix path. And we're going to do the black now, okay? So I'm going to choose my SS6 black. And I'm just going to start from here. Uh, set my bead spacing first to four. And I'm just going to start right in the center. I'm going to start right in the center. End on a corner node. I'm going to leave room for this border of the A, okay, because that's going to be an SS10 stone. Right down here and stop right here. Okay. And then what we'll do now, we'll, uh, now we'll go ahead and do our, our A. And for the A, I'm going to choose SS10. Set my bead spacing to, oh, i got to choose my tool first. 
my fill, and I'm on 4 and 12, so already, but we got our SS10 stone. So again, we're going to stay right on the area of white. I'm not going to worry about the gray on this too much. Okay. Oh, by the way, we want to also change our node style to, to straight because uh, the A is pretty angular. And just stay right on the edge. Remember, as long as you have margin set, it's going to, it's not going to be, the center stone is not going to be right where we're, we're clicking. It's going to be inside on the, uh, inside on the A side. Right here, right here, up here. Remember, just follow the white, okay? Or if I should have followed the gray on this. So let me backspace a, a couple. And I'm just going to follow the gray. So I'm not going to do the gray. That's just adding more work to myself, more cost to the customer. And you probably wouldn't notice it anyway. There we go. Now, to get the stone down here, a couple ways you could do it. You go to Edit Hotfix and click on each stone that you don't need and delete. Uh, another way you can actually do this is go to Hotfix and choose your fill. Well, actually, just select your object. I'll, I'll go to Select Object. And you have this whole tool right here, okay? A lot of people don't even know they have it. And what the whole tool does, it allows me to draw where I need the stones removed. I'll just go to draw a shape, a triangle shape here. And when I finish, all those stones will disappear, will disappear on you. Okay? So now we're going to go ahead and go to black now. We're going to go to an SS10. And I'll go to manual hot fixes to see what an SS10 stone size is going to look like. I think that's the right one for the right hand side of this A, as well as the underbody of the A. So we're going to outline this with SS10. So we're going to hot fix. We're going to go to path. And we're still at four. See, we set our, our, our defaults the moment we created it. As long as you set your defaults, and a lot of people call me and say, every time I set my bead space into three and I draw the next shape out, it goes back to a 10. Well, that's because, number one, you choose your fill that you want to use first. For this, I'm using uniform fill, or path. And then I choose the stone color, I choose the stone color and I set these parameters. I set all these settings before I even click to draw the shape. Okay, and then it just stays on there for the whole entire design. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from here, and we want to go to straight lines. We want to make sure you're on straight lines since we're dealing with straight lines. Stay right in the middle and draw this out. I'm going to hit enter, and what I'm going to do right away is I'm just going to go to edit hotfix. I'm just going to move my nodes. Okay, I'm just going to edit on the fly. You see right here on, on the red here, we may have to move a couple stones. And I'll do this because I saw it when I was drawing it. And I really want to save my time. I want to get the production as fast as possible. And what I'll do is just move a couple stones here and save myself the time later of going through and moving all these stones. Uh, when I do my when, when I do my finishing tool, my solve overlaps, and, and I look for them then. So what I'll do another way of doing this is actually turn the 3D off, so you see the circle. And now you can just move and make sure you're not touching anywhere. This one here is touching here, and I'll, I'll approach these as I draw. It just saves me editing time later. All right, and we'll turn back our 3D mode. And now we're going to draw. We're going to continue drawing. We're still in the black. Still got our beach spacing. Stay right in the middle. And I didn't draw that right, so I'm going to backspace. I'm going to see this a little better. I'm going to keep it as straight as possible. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to turn simulation off. Just take a look and see if I'm touching anywhere, if I'm consistent with positioning. I can move this over just a bit. All right. You see when you start to move things around, they kind of uh, turn invisible so you can see a little better. I'm going to bring this in a little bit more. This one up a little bit away from that red. There we go. 
And then we're going to do the inside part here. Okay, now on the inside part here, I usually do those through manual method, okay? And I'm going to start with an SS6. Since we are using SS6 in the design, I can start with an SS6 and then go to an SS10. And we'll graduate our shadowing effect using small to large stones, okay? And then we'll go to red. And we'll keep the same angle. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my SS6 red. Since I'm using SS6 in the design, I can use it here. There we go. Let's take a look at our design. Okay. Looks pretty good. Okay. So I think you get the idea of how you need to uh, use your drawing methods. Don't, don't automatically think. The only time I have to convert things to a vector is when there's something about this artwork that, re that needs changing. For instance, let's go to a new page, okay? Uh, by the way, the rest of the way I would, I would, I would do this, I would, I would start with the, uh, the red inside here, and it would all be red. I, I would just ignore this black. You're never going to get that black. You can probably get a couple blacks and, gr and graduate out to a red. Uh, you can do that, obviously, and then just do the red where you, where you have it so you've got this round nature. But I would be more inclined to first do the outline here, the white outline here, which borders the red. And then I would do the red, OK? And then I would do the lettering, uh, all one stone at a time. And as far as this, this would be an SS6 stone here. You, I may not do the white here on the banner. Now that I'm looking at it, I got white here on this banner. I'd probably do this one bet more than this one and just do black here, followed by the red interior. And then I would do the uh, probably SS10 stones on the top part of that banner. Okay? That's how, that's how I would do that. And then for the stones inside of here, I would just probably just you know, just do the shape, okay? Probably just use SS6, choose your fill, and just stay right on the edge, okay? So what I'll do is I'll come up here. And for some reason, that, I know why that changed on me, because I, I chose, I worked with red after, after I did that, okay? So now, I'll deselect. Choose my SS6 stone black, choose my fill, and uh, what I'll do is just draw this out. So, like this part right here, just stay right on the corner. As long as you have your margin set and your bead spacing correct, you'll be fine. I'm just going to go over top of this. I'm going to come down here, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to set a corner node. Now I'm going to choose curve node, okay? I'm going to go right to a curve, curve around this letter. Go right to a straight node. So I'm changing my node. Now I'm going to have to go back to a curve because there's a slight curve to this banner here. And the way you do your curves is start of the curve, middle of the curve, and end of the curve. And then we'll end with a corner node. There we go. And then we'll do the same thing over here. And now I got a problem with this, with this line right here. I'm too far down, so just move your vector line. When you see problems, attack them, okay? It does save you time in your design process, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Hotfix. I'm going to choose a fill. And we're going to do this the same way. So I'm, I'm just going to start at the center of the stone here. And I'm just going to follow this curve. Because the stone I'm placing will actually place right dead center on top of that stone. Now, when you're placing your, your points, try not to drag your mouse. If you drag, drag your mouse, while left clicking, you change the shape of the line you're drawing. So, just stop when you when you when you're drawing. Stop your mouse, click. Stop your mouse, click. Stop your mouse, click. No, actually, I'm doing that wrong. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna go right here, corner node, and come across here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my image here. I think that actually looks pretty good. What I'm going to do 
is I'm going to grab the node grip right here and just swing it up a little bit. Matter of fact, I may insert. Ah, I may insert a new node. All right, and the node will be right here. And what I'll do with that is I'm going to bring it over here. All right. Don't worry about that. What I'm going to do now is change it to a corner node so it can manage this little space that we have here. Okay. And then you, you, I just start to fix different things that I'm seeing. Like this. I'll just move the nodes. When you move the nodes, you move all the stones within that field. You see, this is taking up, taking shape right away. Okay, see, we're not, we don't have too much more to do on it. You can see, we all we got to do is the banner and the, and I would do uh, the 1915 and 2015, all in single stone technique, just so I can get the best detail I can, and and the Anzac. This would all be SS6 stone. This would be uh, the the white banner, the white part of the banner would be SS10. Like I said, I would do all red inside of here. And then I would outline it with SS10 black and, and then the rest of this banner in here. And that would finish our job. The only time that I would need to convert anything to a vector, okay, is when I need to change something about this. Maybe they don't want this style of A. Maybe they want this look, but they want the A to be a different font style. Well, in that situation, well, then, yeah, I would have to, I would, I would need a, a, a vector um, and what I would do is actually go to artwork and go to text, and I would find the A that, that interests them. Uh, maybe it's going to be uh, like a little bit more script, like a brush script. I don't know if I have too many scripts in here. Let me find something. And the best way to navigate through your fonts is put your mouse on one of the font names and use your down arrow button on your keyboard and just watch the preview screen to see uh, what font you would rather go to. Uh, maybe it's a, maybe it's a, yeah, like a varsity font. Let's choose that, okay? What I'll do is I'll bring that in. All right, what I'll do is I'm gonna ungroup this, okay? I'm gonna ungroup all, because the reason why, because I don't need the outline, okay? And I'm gonna delete this outline here, leaving just the A. Okay, and then we just bring it over, and then we'll size it up. Always hold your shift button when sizing it up. Now, you, of course, this is a step you want to do before you create any rhinestones, because now all these rhinestones around here would have to go around this new A, okay? And I just superimpose this over top of my graphic, okay? You don't have to worry about converting the, vector, uh, the graphic to a vector to get rid of the A that's inside and put this in here. After all, we are going to be manually drawing our stones into place. Okay? All right, anybody have any questions? Covered a lot of territory. I hope I gave you some really great advice uh, on, on thinking through. A lot, there are, a lot of times there are no automatic, feet, uh, automatic things that you can do. The, the software does great. If, you're, if your graphic is clean, if it's camera ready, if it's a vector, you can use your magic wand or your, or your uh, smart design or actually convert those shapes uh, to stones automatically. But some, the, oftentimes than not, you will have to use your drawing techniques to actually create the design. A uh, quick way to centering a design. Uh, the way I center a design, especially when I develop the design that's in many different spots, um, you see the zero mark on your, on your ruler here? This is the center on your, on your design screen, and you have a zero on the left ruler, okay? So what I usually do is I bring a guideline over, and I set it on the zero on the top, and I grab from the top ruler, and I drag a guideline down. And what I'll do is highlight all objects, and I'll center the gray marks on those guidelines. Okay, and then I could turn the view of the guidelines off. See, I could turn them on and turn them on using the view tools down in the bottom left here. Okay, all right, so, uh, let's see, we got, got another question here. Let's see, 
hold on one second. There we go. Uh, thank you. Can you do a class on how to use pre-made rhinestone fonts, not from Coldessi? Uh, pre-made rhinestone fonts made by who? Because I will have to do some study on it. I, uh, you're talking about like uh, Corel Draw fonts, uh, or or uh, the rhinestone world, okay, and digital art solutions rhinestones. Um, I tell you what, Laverne, if you can actually uh, email me those fonts, because uh, I never used them, and uh, if there's a way I can do that, I, I definitely want to bring that to mind. There are a lot of companies out there that make. Uh, uh, the, I know the rhinestone where, uh, the rhinestone world has software that actually makes fonts. Um, I pretty much use, um, uh, I use Gem Master sometimes uh, to actually create my own fonts and then I have a YNG extension on my Sierra where I can bring those YNG files in and convert them for other machine types. Um, uh, there are some easier softwares to make fonts with. But if you could send me, if you could email me a couple, uh, maybe, uh, maybe uh, one of the, uh, some of those fonts, uh, I'd like to see how I can do it um, and see if there is a way to do it, okay? All right, let's see. Uh, anybody else have any questions at all? All right, well, I hope you have a great weekend. Um, it's uh, storming here, but uh, I'm hoping to have a good, uh, a good rest of the day and a good weekend. It's good seeing everybody. Hope, hope you all, and have a great weekend.